in Thailand they are watching me now the president called me if I have made changed my mind to come back to Thailand I told him to watch online today he will know the reason why I said I'm up with Thailand hallelujah Amen. on that day when I stood before the judge and I was looking at the judge but when I saw the judge I was seeing the great judge that the Bible told me that we stand he said his head is white like snow the Bible said he see it in the midst of the angels I begin to talk to God I said father that he bring me out of this trouble hallelujah before I came June camp last year God showed me a problem that was coming and I don't know how this problem is to come. I ran down to the church begging the Lord to deliver me from this problem. Hallelujah. While I was here, some group of men conspired against me. Something I know nothing about. One week I left Nigeria to Thailand. The police came to my house. They knocked and they said, Mr. Man, you are under arrest. They called the press. The press were everywhere, more than 50. I said, what have I done? And we went to the court to cut the story short because I would have told you how this church stood behind me. Daddy sent prayer group to the mountain. They were interceding before my case. On that day while I was praying in the revelation, the Lord showed me military men with gun. They came into the police station. They said, you have arrested our man. The police said, no, 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 it's not me. It's not me. Lord! The, 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 oh, yes. Hallelujah. As the hey, power yes. of intercession. Oh, yes. The police station was burnt down. Oh, what I'm telling you, God is my witness. And when we got there, I, I never knew that the prosecutor and the police, they have mounted their own lawyer in the court, and I mistakenly took their lawyer without knowing. Now, they were fighting against me. They said I should give them money, I should do this. I said I'm not giving you any dime, because their God will fight for me. They detained me, what I was accused of, I gave them 700% more than what I have accused in order to grant me bail. The Nigerian embassy wrote so many letters for my release because I am the secretary of the Nigerian community. I have served the, co the community for more than four years. But the bottom line of it, when we got to the fighting, all those things they accused me of, when they brought it before then, I wrote to the inspector general of police. I wrote to the, the prosecuting office and the chief judge. I knew there was conspiracy. Now they changed the judges that were handling my case because the embassy was, was in, uh, involved. They changed the judges. They brought new judges. And when the judge saw what happened, she just said, why did you arrest this man? Why was this man arrested? Now the IPO who they paid money in order to imprison me, days before that day, oh, what I'm telling you, call Thailand. The people, they don't know the God I'm serving, and they are watching online now. They want to, and I told them, here is where the power is coming oh. from. They are watching now. They are watching, they are watching. Call Thailand, call Thailand. They are watching. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The God oh, yeah. of Abraham is still alive. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Oh, oh yes, oh, yes. He yes. never oh, yes. oh, yes. oh, 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 yes. The God of Abraham oh, yes. is still alive. Oh, yes. Oh, he yes. never tell oh, yes. me oh, yes. at all. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. 
The judge gave order. After my case was adjoined 15 times, the, the judge gave order that I should be released and whatsoever they took from my company and from my house, they should return it back to me. Oh, oh, yeah. yes. oh, yeah. oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The police, they became afraid because I want to sue them for damages. They've kept me in prison for one year, three months, without granting me bail. I have a company in Thailand. I'm doing my master's for what reason? Now they took me back door in order to deport me, telling me to come again. But I leave the matter unto the law. The Lord who have delivered me right. and my family, I have come to thank him. My brothers in Thailand, you can see where the power I fought my case came from. I give God all the praise in the name of Jesus. To this, I and my family, my beautiful wife, we are supporting the building of the church with a sum of 100,000 naira. God bless you, sir. There is something very interesting. I read her testimony concerning her conversion over there in Thailand. A Jehovah Witness sister. So how did it happen? How did it happen? Praise Your conversion Lord. now. Praise the Lord. My conversion was actually a miracle. Amen. Amen. I want to cut it short. Actually, God used him immensely to build up my spiritual life, honestly speaking. So, the, he started when, uh, as a person, I never believed in miracle. So, he knowing that, he used that to capture my spirit. And he showed me so many miracles, which was true. From there, my interest in the Lord, Jesus, was built. Hallelujah. So I started listening. After which, he now drew my attention to the world, bride assembly. <laughs> there, my, the teaching, the spiritual words from the Bible, the real truth, was made known to me. And it helped me a lot, both in prayer and in everything. And uh, another thing uh, is uh, that of the testimony of Sister Nena. It was wonderful. Uh, I believe it with all my your heart. Hands now. Yes. There and then was when all my worldly attires, I stopped all of it, all of it all. And today, I am happy to be counted as one of the bride of Christ. Glory. <laughs> God bless you. Come Praise to the altar. The Lord. Let's pour oil on your head. Amen. Out of jealousy, because the man was making it there in Thailand. They set him up. Kept him in prison. And finally, God intervened. And they are afraid. Amen. They were afraid that he will sue them. And they quickly, from the court, he was taken to the immigration. It was immigration that advised him, you better go back to your country and go and rearrange yourself before you come back. They know you will sue them. If you decide to go in there and renew your visa there, the police will carry you. What they will give you to eat, where they will keep you. By the time you come back, your life is finished. That's why he quickly just took the next flight and came back to save his life. <laughs> you know that somebody is after him. But I'm telling you, all things work together for good. Hallelujah. 
And he says he's not going back to that country again. He will come here and use the government to collect back his things. From here, he will sue the government there. From Nigeria, he will sue them. Hallelujah. Nothing. We are covered. We are covered. I knew his faith. I knew where he stood. And when he entered that trouble, we say it's a lie. So many of you joined us in our prayers. And God kept assuring us that he was in control. The purpose why it happened. Father, we give you thanks for it. We pour you this oil. Brother Elvis, you have just started. Your prosperity has just started. We anoint you. And if there be any other thing they fire against you, the Lord will pull it out of your life. We anoint you today for restoration in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We anoint you, sister. And the child that was born, they could not recognize his father. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Can we clap our hands for Jesus? Hallelujah. Can we start our study? Amen. Can we stand up and pick a text from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2? And then we close and we go home. And we come back on Wednesday for Men Fellowship. And we come back on Tuesday for Shiloh. Now 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Can we be on our feet and just take it as a text? And please, let's be reverent. This topic is so important, I decided I will not rush it. Let everybody catch it. Are we there? Some people are still sitting. Maybe they don't have Bible. Chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians, verse 1. Up to verse 4. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letters from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition who is he verse 4 who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God seated in the temple of God showing himself that he is God May the Lord add blessing to the reading of his word. God bless you. Be seated. Hallelujah. And we, we, we are looking, we are continuing our book of the study of the book of Revelation. Like I said, I deliberately halted, uh, suspended chapter 13. And chapter 17. Because that itself is deep. It is talking about the much talked about Antichrist. There is something that the whole world they are aware of because they have heard from the people of the book. They call us the people of the book. The Jews are the people of the book. They have heard that there is somebody that will come to rule the whole world known as the Antichrist. And everybody has attempted to expose it, to go into it. And from my own little study of all the groups that have, have attempted to go into who this Antichrist is, to my own understanding. Because this revelation, God made sure he did not give it to everybody 
it's not anyhow. Just as he did not allow everybody to know what happened in the Garden of Eden, just as he also did not allow anybody to know how he will round up things in the church and in the world through the book of Revelation. He wrote them there, but did not allow anybody to know all these passages because he has set a time for it. And some of this will only be known at the end time. And of all those who have even attempted, and some were just joking around it, the only one is the Seventh-day Adventist. That woman, Ellen G. White, the leader, the founder of the Seventh-day Adventist, the woman, she attempted, but in the light of the present truth, the door of revelation that has been opened to a group of people called the bride for this age, we know where she goofed, and we know where she got to what level she got. And I thank God that she is the only one of all the groups that have made attempt that have been bold to tell the whole world who the Antichrist is. And I agree with her. Amen. I agree with her. That's why I'm re echoing it. So don't begin to think that I am bringing anything new. I'm not bringing anything new. William Abraham himself also, you know, repeated what uh, Ellen G. White wrote, but with a further light. Hallelujah. And that light is what we are carrying on and shining around. And it is not for everybody. Amen. I was telling somebody today that I discovered that uh, the issue of the topic of the Antichrist, the topic of the Antichrist cannot be exhausted through a sermon or through sermons. Because there are a lot of references to be made. And if I stand at the altar here and begin to read those references, we will just bore the people. And so, I will present this topic in a way that a picture is given. Then, because I intend to put this in book form, then in that book form, we will now take time and bring all the references together and put them there to get a clearer picture. But God will help me to give the picture enough at least for you to know and believe who the Antichrist is. Praise the Lord. There are two beasts in Revelation chapter 13. Amen. That are described there. But please, because of references I will be making, please let us do a little Bible reading so that when I'm making reference, you can understand what I am talking about. The Antichrist, as we see it, was first revealed to Daniel. Daniel first saw it. So let's see what Daniel spoke. Daniel saw it, Paul saw it, and John saw it in the Isle of Patmos. So let's go to Daniel chapter 7. Daniel, let's, let's just take that reading. There was a revelation that Daniel saw. Please, let's read chapter 7. Can we go on? Verse 1. Please, follow, follow. See, they didn't bring me from heaven. Now, from nightclub. In fact, the last place, I, was in, I came back from nightclub in the morning. That was the last nightclub I attended. 1989 or so. A nightclub, 88. Late 88. Nightclub. I was in the office when they sent for me. Now from there, fia, under arrest. Fia, Ikoi. They changed my address to Ikoi. And I lived in Ikoi. It was there. I met with the Lord and desired to know him. And it is that desire 
that he said he who seeks we find. I wanted to know him. So I studied to know. So you have to listen. You have to listen. I studied. If you, if you come, if you see the books I have, it will surprise you. Surprise you. Study, 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 study. So my wife, I say, yes, I want to compare. There's something I want. They say, which one of all these books like this on top of your bed? I said, this one, now Clarence Larkin. This one, now Raymond Jackson. This one, now Enoch Yeboha. This one, now this one. This one, all of them, all of them. This one, now William Abraham. This one, Bible. Even this commentary, Bible. Commentary. I say, wait, I say, I don't want to make mistake. Because I'm going to put it down in a book form. And the whole world is listening to me. I want to make sure that what I am saying is scriptural. Hallelujah. It's not academic, it's revelation. And I prayed very well because I must not mislead the people. I know a lot of people hang on to what I am saying. They believe in me. I must not mislead them. Praise the Lord. So chapter 7 of Daniel. Daniel saw a vision. Remember that, that, that Nebuchadnezzar also saw a vision of four kingdoms that will rule the earth before Christ will come and establish the, the, the everlasting kingdom on earth here. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar saw it and Daniel gave the interpretation. Daniel also saw it and God showed him in symbols and this is one of it chapter 7 in the verse 1 in the first year of Belshazzar king of Babylon Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters Daniel spoke and said I saw in my vision by night and behold the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea this great sea is the Mediterranean Sea. That tells you the four winds are located around the Mediterranean Sea. That is for location. And those four winds are four world powers that rise in that area that rule the whole world. Verse 3. And four great beasts came up from the sea, divers one from another. The first was like a lion, and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth, and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it, and they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this, I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, the fourth one. And please, the first three beasts are descriptions of the three world powers. If you remember Daniel's interpretation, we note that the first power is what? The world power was what? Babylonian Empire. Another power took over from them, the Medopetian Empire. Another power, the third one, the Grecian Empire, Greece, took over. The fourth one that Nebuchadnezzar saw is clearly the Roman Empire. And please, we are concerned with the fourth beast because it is the fourth beast in the time of the fourth beast ruling, the fourth empire ruling, that Christ comes to end man's rulership of the earth. And we are now under that Roman empire, that fourth beast. This Roman empire is described 
as a beast. But notice what Daniel saw. Daniel could describe the type of beasts. A lion, a leopard, and just describe the three. But this fourth one, see his description from verse 7. This fourth empire, to tell you the peculiarity of this fourth empire. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn. There were ten horns on the head of that beast. And there was the eleventh horn. But it was a little horn. Before whom, though it is little, before whom there were three of the first big horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn we are eyes like the eyes of man and the mouth speaking great things. Little horn plucked up three other bigger horns. Our emphasis, we shall look closely who that little horn is among the ten horns. Verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit. Who is the ancient of days? The Lord Jesus himself. Whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like a fairy flame and his wheels as burning fire. A fairy stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were opened. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days, and they brought him here before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and the kingdom, and all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Verse 15. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit, in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by, and asked him the truth of all, of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall rise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I will know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows, I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them, until the ancient of days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Verse 23. Thus he said, the one given Daniel the interpretation, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, 
and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise and another shall rise after them and he shall be diverse from the first and he shall subdue three kings. I have the history of when those three kings were subdued. I have the history of who those three kings were that were plucked off. The other horns that were plucked off. I have that history. And I'll put it together in making this message understood. Verse 25. And he shall speak, that is that little horn now, that little horn now. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. And shall wear out the sins of the Most High. And think to change times and laws. He will think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. A time is one year. Times, two years. Dividing of time, half a year. How many years would that be? Three and a half years, the period of the tribulation. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. And let me read chapter 8 again because I will make reference to it too. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at the first in chapter 7. And I saw in a vision, and it came to pass when I saw that I was a Shushan in the palace, which is in the province of Elam, and I saw in a vision, and I was by the river Ulai. Then I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram, which had two horns. And the two horns were high. But one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward, so that no beast might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of the hand, but he did according to his will and became great. And as I was considering, behold, an he goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground. And the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. And he came to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river and ran unto him in the fury of his power. And I saw, and I saw him came close unto the ram and he was moved with color against him and smote the ram and break his two horns and there was no power in the ram to stand before him and he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. Therefore, the he goat waxed very great and when he was strong, the great horn was broken and for it came up four notable ones towards the four winds of heaven. And out of one of them came forth a little horn. That is the reason why I am reading chapter 8. So we are having two horns now, two little horns now. There is a horn in chapter 7 and there is another little horn in chapter 8. That is the reason. And there are two horns and why I say so, I have read some commentaries, I have read some books trying to describe this these two horns and their interpretation cannot jive with the scripture of revelation. And so let me put it, that's why I am reading it because we shall make reference to it. Verse 9. And out of one of them came forth a little horn which works exceeding great towards the south and towards the east and towards the pleasant land. What is the pleasant land? The land of Israel. And it was great, even to the host of heaven. And it cast down some of the hosts and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the, uh, of the host. And by him, the daily sacrifice was taken away. And the place of his sanctuary was cast down. And an horse was given him against the daily sacrifice in the pleasant land in Israel. By reason of transgression, and it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. 
Then I had one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? And he said unto me, Unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. And it came to pass, when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning then, behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of Uli, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid and fell upon my face, but he said unto me, Understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. Now as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep on my face towards the ground, but he touched me and set me upright. And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation, for at the time appointed the end shall be. The ram which thou sowest, having two horns, are the kings of Media and Persia. So the history is very clear. And the rough goat is the king of Grecia. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Now, that being broken, whereas four stood up for it, four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in his power. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance, that is that little horn, and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power, because it is the dragon that gives him the power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Also in chapter 11, that little horn, the second little horn, did something that made him to be of so much importance in the history around the Mediterranean. Praise the Lord. It is that same ruler that is described here in chapter 11 about all the conquerors, the conquests that he will do. And in verse 29, verse, okay, verse 28, that same king then shall he return into his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant. And he shall do exploits and return to his own land. At the time appointed, he shall return and come towards the south, but it shall not be as the former or as the latter. For the ships of Shittim shall come against him, therefore he shall be grieved and return, and have indignation against the holy covenant. So shall he do. And he shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant. And arms shall stand on his path, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifices, and they shall have the abominations that make it desolate. Because in Matthew 24, Jesus made reference to that abomination. He said, when you see the abomination that make it desolate, stand in the holy place. He said, he who read it, let him understand. If you are in the house, stop, don't come down. If you are in the field, don't come back to Jerusalem. Now, this abomination that make it desolate, verse 32, and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Now, 
have that at the back of your mind because I am going to make references to these things, these places I am reading. That is Daniel. That is what he saw. Then also, uh, uh, we have we read Second Thessalonians Apostle Paul. What Apostle Paul saw. Let's read it again. Apostle Paul was talking the sentiment. This is how God showed him. Remember, it is God showing. Praise the Lord. It is God showing. He is, is, he is, he showed Nebuchadnezzar. The same thing he showed Nebuchadnezzar is the same thing also he showed Daniel. The same thing also he showed uh, Paul. And the same thing also he showed John, the revelator. Now, now concerning John, I mean uh, Paul, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, this is where we have read. Where he says, verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And please, suddenly the meaning of the falling away gets clearer and clearer. The falling away is the same thing as iniquity by interpretation. And what is the falling away? It is nothing but lawlessness. Then, hallelujah. So the mystery of iniquity is the mystery of lawlessness. And which law? The law of God. And this is getting clearer and clearer he said, Christ will not come except there come a falling away first. And please, if you are ever alive to what is going on now, you will know that the world has reached a stage now where this scripture is fulfilled, the falling away. The time of godlessness. The time where anything about the law of God they are confronting him headlong to say it doesn't matter. Abominations are now being exalted in the whole world. Governments are sanctioning what Bible call abomination. And please, Europe is generally a Christian nation dominated by the Roman Catholic Church. So that you will understand that little horn, how powerful it is. The eleventh horn on that head of that beast. And this is the age where there is total lawlessness. You quote Bible to anybody, they will fight you. But bring anything. You can imagine a group of people, some of you have seen that, that clip, where a man rose up and said he is the Antichrist. A man, I think somewhere in America also, that, 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 that we, we have a wrong meaning of antichrist. That the word antichrist is not an evil word. The word antichrist is talking about a replacement of Christ. And that he is the replacement of Christ. And he has millions of followers. And then they are putting tattoo in their body, 666. It's just lawlessness. Nothing more. People are standing at the altar and ordaining gay, ordaining homosexuals into the ministry. People are in this age that we are in, and people, and, and, and they are going to such a stage now that if Ah, Satan. They put a law. They'll be, ah, Satan. May Christ come soon. They, they will start small, small. Before you know what? They injected their people. Ah. They, why does this mean so much to me? Because I am also a target. If you have anything to offer, that has light. The whole kingdom of darkness will start assignment on you. 
Watch all the world renowned musicians. All of them, talented musicians, they were all singers in the churches. Watch all of them. They were all singers in the churches. They were in the choir. You see, this thing we are saying, young children that are just growing up now in this digital age and, you know, you don't understand what is going on. You don't understand what is ahead for you people. If the Lord tarries, some of us will get old and fade out and go and leave you here to face something. I'm telling you that there is grave danger that is awaiting the whole world. Satan is taking the complete control they began to put their own people, they form courts, their court members begin to go and become judges that will interpret the law. And now they are in the supreme courts of all these world nations so that you will understand by the time we come proper to the book of Revelation, why America is called the beast. And then all over, they are there and they are passing the laws and now, America that started as a Christian nation, they have legalized abortion, legalized, what do you call it? Gay, homosexuality, by a Supreme Court judgment. So they did it now. Now, now, now. Anybody, any church, they put another law, hate speech. Thank you. There's what you call hate speech, a law. If you begin, like I am speaking against gay now, it will be interpreted that I am preaching hatred against a group of people. Therefore, I am inciting you against gay. Then the law will catch up with me. And then they will jail me. That you are not supposed to say anything that will make anybody think negatively against another person. They put that law. Nobody knew where they were going. Now, if any man sees you church, because all churches are supposed to be registered, and then they come to you, a gay, carry another man, say, come to you, Pastor Francis, please wed me and my husband, boy, man, boy, girl, man, girl, boy. And you refuse. That is called discrimination. They will close that church. So if you are making them, me, 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 they will take off. Let's go and close that church. Come on, go, go tell them I'm making Marius. If you know Marius, we'll close, we'll end his ministry. That is the fall away. Now people are saying openly there is no God. Now people are all the abominations, anything the Bible call abomination. Now, it is celebrated. The Bible says, a man should not wear that which pertains to a woman. Neither should a woman wear that which pertains. He said, all that do is abomination. He says, it's abomination for you to do that. Is it any longer abomination? No, it is now fashion. And pastors are promoting it. That is the fall away. It was not so in the beginning. And so, Apostle Paul, at that time, was saying, oh, glory be to God. Apostle Paul was saying, hey, Christ will come, Christ will come because every age, they believe Christ will come at their time. And God gave him, just like he gave Daniel revelation, he also gave him, Christ will not come until there is a fall away. The iniquity. So that you will understand why he said that, that not all that say, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom. At that day, many shall say, I do this. I cast out spirit in your name. I did miracle in your name. And he will say, get it from me. I didn't know you. He said, you that walk what? You that walk what? You walk iniquity. You are promoting abominations. And yet you were anointed. Anointed by the spirit of God. Genuinely anointed. But what were you doing with the anointing? You allow Satan to catch you with the doesn't matter gospel. 
and see the crowd that go to such places. Every year in Germany, in Canada, in Holland, even in the US, there is gay convention. There is gay, what do they call it? It's a day to mark gay. And hundreds of thousands of them will march on the street. Man and man. Woman and woman. I am gay, I am proud. One t-shirt, some naked, some this. And then they are walking for the whole day, disturbing the whole place. Now, hallelujah. Either Germany or which other country just gave a law that says, I think it's Germany or so, that they, they, should, ab they should abolish, they are abolishing the law against incest. That that after they saw uh, the case of a young man that uh, fathered four children by his blood sister. And when it was found out, you know, you know what? They took them to court. It's against the law. Now they decided to abolish that law. There's nothing wrong. Now, they are taking 12-year-old, 12-year-old, they're passing a law that 12-year-old, 12-year-old girl can now have contraceptive. Can now have IUD. Can now, so that she can decide to have sex anyhow, anytime she like. That she's not allowed. And therefore now, sex education is taught to those little children. A young man, a, 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 a one man took a whole family, I think either Canada or US, where it happened that his child is in a school and the class teacher took them to a shop. He called the class. It was topic for sex education. Then took them to a shop where sex toys are sold. Little, little children, primary school. Primary school children. And the school is saying, well, what's wrong with this? Education. It's education. They are teaching them now not to discriminate. They are teaching children in the school to see, look, discover how you are made, how natural you are made. If sometimes you think that you are a girl, but actually you may be a man. So if you feel that you are a man, then you are free to go and then act like a man and then do a sex change. Don't, don't hide it. Don't, don't hide it. And that for a long time, the gay, it has been, they, they have been hiding. They have been hiding. And then, and then meanwhile, that is how natural that, that's how they have been made. And why are we discriminating against them? That is how they are. That is how you are. Allow them as long as they are not coming, does not affect you. It is within him. What is your business? Leave him. It is freedom. I'm saying something for you to see that the end has come. The end has come. Morality is being eroded. Completely eroded. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They are saying that allow little children to watch pornography. I read it. He says sex education. They should know what it is all about. Why are you discriminating against them? And so Apostle Paul at that time says that this end will not come except, number one, there come a falling away. First, verse three, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God. Or that is worshipped so that he as God, seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember you not? That when I was here with you, I told you these things. So Apostle Paul 
was well grounded in this revelation and he kept telling the Thessalonian church and I'm sure the Corinthian church and all the churches that he had established all around. And now you know what withhold it that he might be revealed in his time. And the, this is the time. This is the time. Hallelujah. Okay, let me read on verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity don't already work. Only he who not let it will let until he be taken out of the way. And you can read that on up to verse 12. Now, now he says that the mystery of iniquity don't already work. And let me make a few comments on that, church. There are two very important mysteries in the Bible. I've mentioned several times. The first mystery is First Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. Can we read it? It says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God, what is the mystery? God was manifest in the flesh. That is the mystery. That is the mystery. The mystery of godliness. Now Apostle Paul is mentioning the second mystery. What is the second mystery? He said it is the mystery of iniquity. Why does he call it a mystery? It's a mystery because it is hidden. A fact that is close that you will need God who encoded it to decode it for you. Hallelujah. And please, why do we call ourselves the bride? We call ourselves the bride. The bride connotes a special relationship with the bridegroom. Amen. We are not just girlfriends. We are not concubines. Are you understanding me? Please, can I see the bride here, bride of Jesus Christ? Oh, put that your, I didn't say bride assembly church. I mean bride of Jesus Christ. Can I see your hand up? Hallelujah. What distinguishes us is what distinguishes, I mean from the denomination, is what distinguishes Isaac from the other sons of the concubines. Abraham was going to bless his children. He gave the sons of the concubine, Keturah's children. What did he give them? Gifts. Anointing, nyafu, nyafu. Gifts, nyafu, 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 nyafu. But to the child of promise, Isaac, what did he give him? Oh. That is Genesis chapter 25. Oh. That means he gave both the gifts and more than the gifts. Church, therefore, you will notice that after the, the, the what do you call him? The Keturah's children, Keturah's children of the concubine, they received the gifts. Did you hear anything again about those children? Where did God move to? The child of promise. He was a covenant child. The next story that continued with the promise that he gave Abraham continued with Isaac. It was through Isaac oh, until Christ came. And through Isaac oh, until Christ came. And through Christ, oh, it will move on. Through the seven church ages, oh, pick them, pick them, pick them. Along that line, pick them, pick them. Until today, he is now in Lagos picking some. I don't know how many are here he's picking. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How can you say you are a Christian and all you know is about anointing? Gifts. Open Bible, John 3.16, you don't know what it means. How can you say you are a servant of God? And all you know is just what you can eat with the gifts. I seek. There 
there was something Isaac knew that those other children of Keturah didn't know. What is the evidence? He went back to those wells. He went back. That means among the things that Abraham told Isaac is the secret of those wells. The location of those wells. He left landmarks. They are the ancient landmarks. He said that after the death of Abraham, the Philistines did what? They stopped those wells of living water with what? Earth. Earth. Earthly doctrines. Earthly bound doctrines until there was no more water to come out of that fountain of living water. And that is the thing that we are talking about in various ways presented. And take note of something. It says the mystery of godliness. What is the mystery of godliness? It is God in the flesh. Therefore, what is the God mystery of iniquity? It is Satan in the flesh. You are going to look for the Antichrist. You are going to locate him in a man. Hallelujah. Listen. The mystery of godliness, God in the flesh, but born by a virgin woman. He was born by a virgin woman. Born by Mary, a virgin, a virgin woman. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And there is, there is, there are three symbolic women in the Bible we know. Amen. Israel, Revelation chapter 12, is a woman. That woman described there is Israel. Can we read it? Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 12. Let, let me show you something. Revelation chapter 12. Amen. Verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, traveling in bed, and pained to be delivered. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 5. And she brought forth a man child. Who is that woman? It's Israel. The description there talks about God's covenant with the nation of Israel that has 12 stars, the 12 tribes of Israel. And this woman was pained to deliver a child of prophecy. She was pregnant. Prophecy of a Messiah that is coming. And verse 5. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, so, 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 yes. Physically, the woman, Mary, delivered the child, the mystery of godliness. Listen, physically a woman, but God was using that woman to speak of the nation of Israel. Number one, she had to be a virgin. You cannot serve God and mammon. God raised up Israel to serve him and him alone. They were not to be involved in any form of idolatry. He gave them the law so that they would live true to him and him alone. She was not to be involved in adultery, fornication in any way. And through her, a child was born. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that is Christ Jesus. The mystery of iniquity, the mystery of lawlessness, produces Satan in the flesh. But this time, because it is a lawless woman, he is in Revelation chapter 17, she is called a harlot and the mother of harlots. Another woman that is described there, and it is through that woman of lawlessness. 
Hallelujah. That the Antichrist is born. Satan manifests in the flesh. He is called the Antichrist. It is a man that will be produced from a harlot system. Produced by a prostitute system as described in Genesis chapter, I mean in Revelation chapter 17. Now take note. So we have Christ and Antichrist. Christ and Antichrist. Now God putting the picture ahead for us to see, you know, types and shadows and, and, and four views, you know, views ahead. His whole story started from Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. Can we read it? Genesis chapter 3. Immediately the fall, this is the judgment. Chapter 3 and verse 15. And to the, let's read from verse 14. From verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. And above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shall thou go, and thou shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Note verse 15. Note it very well. And I will put enmity between thee. Who is that thee? Serpent. And the woman. Between the first enmity is between who and who? The serpent and the woman. Naturally, you will look here and think that 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 D there is serpent and the woman is Eve. There is no record that serpent had any fight again with the woman because he was immediately cursed. So it means he is speaking prophetically about that spirit that came upon you that beast, because it's an animal, it's a beast. And the woman, that woman there is the nation of Israel. Let's read on. I'll put the enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed. Serpent had a seed and her seed. Uh, it shall bruise thy head. Hallelujah. The seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent. The seed. Hallelujah. I don't know why we will understand this thing. Hallelujah. And thou shalt bruise his heel. Now you will think that is referring to Cain and Abel. Because we say that Cain is the seed of the serpent. Isn't it? What happened between Cain and Abel was a foreshadow of what was coming ahead. Let's go a little deeper, please, in our revelation. Praise the Lord. We have been singing songs, singing songs, singing songs. Brabra, I'm saying, Brabra, I'm saying, Brabra, I'm saying, can we go a little further? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, church, because serpents. He says, there will be fight between the two seeds. The, the, the seed of the woman, hallelujah, will bruise the head of the serpent, but also the serpent will bruise his heel. But if you say it is Cain and Abel, Cain finish Abel. Did Abel fight back? Did Abel fight back? Therefore, he was not speaking of Cain and Abel. Because Galatians chapter 4 tells us that the seed of the woman is who? Jesus Christ. So, listening there, you would think he's talking about that serpent seed, Cain, that was born. He went beyond that. But just as there was enmity, hallelujah, between Cain and Abel, the serpent seed, and also the seed of God. So also, it was going to happen in future. It was a prophecy that the Lord was given there. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And see what happened. Because it is a beast. Go back to Revelation chapter 12. 
Where we were reading. Amen. Revelation chapter 12. Hallelujah. Verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. That is how that spirit looks. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. See now. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour the child as soon as it was born. The enmity. So that you'll understand. Do you know that when Christ was born, Satan was confused. Satan had that test, that prophecy about the seed of the woman. And he knew who it would be. And so when Jesus came and was performing miracles, Satan said, whether this is the man no. And he came, he said, come, if thou be the son of God, if thou be the son of God, turn these stones to bread. Let me see. From that discussion, Satan was not sure. Satan was not sure. But that also let me know that Satan was watching out for it. And watch the history. He has been watching out and watching out and watching out and watching out. To see when it will happen. And when one miracle worker appeared from nowhere, is to make sure that this seed doesn't come up. That is why he keeps raising people to hate Israel, to destroy Israel, because he said as soon as the child was born, he said the dragon came after the child to devour the child. But before he could use a herod to come after that child, God came by night and moved him away to Egypt. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He disappeared. He could not get him in Egypt. Oh, glory be to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, we have the, the spirit, the mystery of iniquity. It is Satan himself in an agenda. Working out where he will eventually come he will build the system down as we shall be looking at it and then finally come to a man that he will now incarnate just as God produced another man in the womb of Mary and incarnated him and became God in the flesh. Satan is going to produce through a system that he has been arranging and organizing all these centuries. And a man will come up. And Daniel, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He saw ten kingdoms. This, I mean the last kingdom. He saw a kingdom rather. That is the fourth kingdom. With ten horns. And that is talking about the Roman Empire. Talking about the ten nations, those founding nations of the initial old Roman Empire. The whole of European Union is Roman Empire. But we have the old Roman Empire, their identity. I mean, they were made up of those ten kingdoms, ten nations. And all others that broke fought and increase. We look at them. They are still within the same cycle. And, and then, but in there, there was a little horn. So there's another kingdom. Or rather, another power. Another nation. Small, but very powerful. So powerful until it reduced, plug up Three of those kings, as small as he is, yet powerful. And that little horn, praise God, hallelujah, is 
the Vatican. It's the Vatican. And it is an ecclesiastical power. Those other ten horns are political powers. Hallelujah. But this little horn, amen, is the spiritual one. It is ruling spiritually. Praise the Lord. It is ruling by, I mean, through the Christian faith, supposedly Christian faith. Amen. And let me tell you, I said the whole of Europe, the whole of Europe is ruled by the Antichrist. I'm sorry, by the Vatican. And you may not know it. That is the smallest nation on earth. It is a one city state. But it has consulars in all the nations of the world. They have ambassadors. They have their currency. They even have their policemen. They have their courts. They have their banks. They have their economy. So while he's there, he's both a spiritual head and also a political head there. Because even in the United Nations, they are recognized as an observer nation. And very soon, they will go there and be a full member with the power to vote. Praise the Lord. And that nation is more powerful than any other nations in the European Union. Because the territory of her command stretches beyond Europe to the whole world. They have her subjects even in Nigeria here. As I'm talking now, they're ready to kill me for speaking against their leader. Yet, they are in Nigeria here. The whole of Europe, they are the richest organization in the whole world. Every citizen of Europe, in all Europe, all Europe, as you get job, you pay, it, it's a tithe, they call it tithe. From your employer, we remove your tithe and send it to the Catholic Church. So imagine a population of Europe and imagine the wealth of that church. And those of you who want to stand to fight that church, be very careful. If God is not with you, they know how to finish you. They have everything and they are everywhere. They are everywhere. Praise the Lord. And they are respected anywhere. In your village in the east, they, must, they respect the priest. They are more than the Eze. Yes. Hallelujah. Anytime a Catholic bishop says anything concerning any matter in any country, it makes headlines in that country. When Bishop Matthew Kuka of the Sokoto Diocese, Catholic Diocese, when he made mention of something about Jonathan and Buhari, for one month, newspapers not give us rest. Dissecting what he said, that's it. and now he has become a star. They invite him up and down. Who is he? He's a Catholic priest. Why? That spells his importance. You touch him, the whole country will suffer. You touch any Catholic priest, if, they, if you don't go to Pope or to beg, you are finished. How powerful they are. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So describe him as a horn in Daniel chapter, little horn in Daniel chapter 7. Then in Daniel chapter 8, there's another horn by the description and I will give the history and everything. By that history, you will discover that 
it is talking about one Syrian prince. And it is that man that almost all theologians believe because of him that the Antichrist will come from Syria. Because of the history of that man. How he dealt with Israel. He was so vile, so wicked. So wicked that he went to Israel, destroyed everything there, went into the temple, the Holy of Holies, went to the altar of sacrifice and took a pig, abomination, a pig, and went to that altar and slaughtered it. Something God said is abomination. Don't let it come near the temple. You are not even to eat it. He brought it to the altar there and slaughtered it and forced the Jews to eat it. Eat it or slaughter you. Such abomination. Took all the sacred things away. Desecrated the whole temple. The wickedness he did was so much. That is why when you read it, they will say he is coming from Syria. But I can tell you that he is only a foreshadow. Hallelujah. It's a foreview in our head of the, what the real Antichrist will do. Just as Cain is a foreview of what the Antichrist will do to the seed of the woman. The same thing too. And that uh, Syrian general is no other but Antiochus Epiphany. Antiochus Epiphany. It's a popular name in, in theological history. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And Apostle Paul called that man, he says, the man of sin because he's the promoter of lawlessness. He's a promoter of iniquity. He's a harlot, a product of a woman that is called a harlot and the mother of her, all harlot and the mother of all abominations of the earth. That's how God described him in Revelation chapter 17. And Apostle Paul called him the son of perdition. The one that will lead to destruction. John, Revelation chapter 13. Let's read it. Describes him as a beast. That is what he saw. From verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a great, I mean, I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. This beast rises up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns, how many crowns? Ten crowns, and upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. That is a description of the fourth beast that Daniel also saw in Daniel chapter 7. And the beast, and that beast is the Roman Empire. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Take note. And his feet as the feet of a bear. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And so, so you can see that the identification of this last fourth empire, the Roman Empire, is all but a combination of all the powers that the last three empires had. All loaded on him, as that description goes. He says, and the dragon, who is the dragon described here is Satan, gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death. One of his heads, wounded to death. One of those heads, on top of that beast, was wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beast. 
And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 42 months. How many years? 42 months divided by 12 months of a year. You will see it is three and a half years. The last three and a half years period of tribulation. Praise the Lord. Take note here. Verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. One of the heads of that beast that was wounded the head Hallelujah. One of the heads there is the vertical head. It's the ecclesiastical head. When was he wounded to death? It was wounded by the reformation. Through Luther and all the reformers that came up, they dealt a deadly blow to the supremacy of the Pope. And finally, a general, the, 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 uh, uh, one of the, the emperors of, uh, of, of, of France, Bartholomew something. I've forgotten the name. Something like that. I'll get the name. That came down, walked there and deposed him and charged him and imprisoned the Pope. What was not possible before. And that is how it was wounded to death. But they thought it was dead. And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beasts. Because all the power came back again to him. How? The same people that dealt that deadly blow against the Catholic Church, we are there today. They are all together now. They are all together now. He's cutting everybody. He's cutting. I have clips. I have write-ups. I have even videos of the popes, past popes, going around and preaching unity that we are serving the same God, one God. And all because remember, she had her daughters. Revelation 17 says so. And they are all coming back, one by one, one by one, one by one. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By the time we come to the second beast in that Revelation chapter 13, then you will see how she got back her powers. Through the image that was raised unto the beast. And that is where America had a role to play. But to restore the European Union, to restore Europe after the Second World War, it was America that brought them back together. The same America, again, hallelujah, is the same power, beast, that Satan uses to give recognition to the Pope of Rome. That is why she is called the beast. Because it is the same old Satan that is working to heal back the wounds that that power had. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, verse 4. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Amen. Let me read verse 6. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. To blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them in the tribulation. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Who are they? They are the elect. Only the elect will worship the man. I will not worship the man. 
The whole world will worship the man. Only God's elect will not worship. By the time he manifests to that level, the rapture has taken place. The only people that will be left to face him will be the Jews and the foolish virgins. In the last three and a half years, if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with a sword must be killed with a sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. I keep referring to that woman, chapter 17. Let's read it before we close for today. Revelation chapter 17. Because I want you to understand that that beast, the beast, it came out of the sea. That first beast, the Roman beast that John saw, came out of the sea. So, so what does that mean to come out of the sea? Revelation chapter 17 makes it clearer for us. It says, And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials. I'm reading from verse 1. And talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore. Whore is a prostitute that seated upon many waters. He seated upon many waters. With whom that great hall, the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication by the recognition that they have given to her. They look at that woman as the most holy place, they revere that place. He's the most respected human being on earth. Verse 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. Beautiful beast. Full of names of blasphemy. Sent this. Sent that. Sent this. Holy mother of God. All of them go and see all their images everywhere. Hallelujah. Having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Having a golden cup in her hand. That tells you it's a very wealthy woman. Very rich woman. But what? Full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. While the whole world is having so much respect for her, God is seen and, and put a label on her as a mystery. People don't know who you are. Babylon the Great. The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. That is how God knows her. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wonder with great admiration because she's having what? Drunken with the blood of the saints because when Christianity when she attempted to marry paganism with Christianity that produced who she is up to this time, anybody at that time that refused to join her heresies, what happened? You are termed a heretic and no heretic should be spared. You are killed. History showed about 68, is it 68? Millions Protestants were killed. With the influence she had with the state, connected 
with the emperors, uh, the, the kings, the Caesar, what, what the, 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 the authorities of the land at that time. It became the only acceptable state religion. And everyone was supposed to come under it. You refuse, you are termed a heretic. And you'll be killed. Amen. And so he was wondering with great admiration, which kind of woman be this? Hey, do you know John did not know who he was seeing? It's just, it's a revelation he saw. But we know better now. Hallelujah. Verse 7. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore did thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carried her, which had the seven heads and the ten horns. The seven heads and the ten horns is the beast that carried that whore, that woman. The beast that thou sowest, that beast that you saw, was and is not. And shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet he is. <laughs> And here is the mind which had wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman seated. We want to tell you the location of the woman now. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. And there are only two cities in the whole world surrounded by seven mountains. Jerusalem and Rome. Amen. And so you can see that that woman certainly is not Israel. Because Israel is the wife of God. So it is not in the Vatican. It's the Vatican. Hallelujah. Verse 10. And there are seven kings. Five are falling. And one is, and the other is not. It's not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And there is a history to show who and who are involved. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sowest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. This shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is the Lord of hosts and king of kings and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Verse 15. And he said unto me, interpretation, the waters which thou sowest we are the whole seated. They are what? People and multitudes and nations and tongues. So if there is a beast that came out of the sea, it simply means that it is a beast that came from politics, from among the people. Because the second beast came out of the earth in Revelation chapter 13 which is America. So when we get there, you see the difference between the first and the second beast. One came out of the sea, waters, meaning peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. But the second beast in Revelation chapter 13 came out of the earth. Verse 16. And the ten horns which thou sowest upon the beast, this shall hate the whore later on. We will see it in the divine agenda. And shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put it in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman with that sowest is that great city. 
which reigned over the kings of the earth. And that city is the Vatican City. <laughs> we will look at the second beast next time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my Can we stand up? Wonderful King that shall pass and set me free. Oh, silently now I wait for thee Ready, my, my God, God, thy I will to see. Open my eyes, you might be sweet. sweet. Divine. The last verse in Revelation chapter 17, he ended it by, by telling John. Who the city is. Who that woman is, I mean. Now, he didn't call it woman again. He said now it is what? A city. That has what? And the woman with that so is that great city. That hall. She ran it over the kings of the earth. She has influence in all of them. Including Nigeria, whether it be Muslim or Christian. Hallelujah. Let that man say he's visiting Nigeria. Now our president will go airport to receive him. All the protocol that is accorded heads of state will be accorded him and more more will be accorded him. Then Revelation chapter 13, which we shall see, now also now tell us who that man of sin is. He also said, here is wisdom. And so we will do the calculation. In fact, I intend to, to type it. I give you paper. Everybody, you will have it. Everybody, you have a copy. Have a copy. You have a copy. The calculation. So that without controversy, you will see and pinpoint and know who we are to watch. People are watching, watching. They are, they are watching. What did I see? Somebody sent something in the social distance. They sent a copy to me. A post to me about one man that is so rhetoric you know and talking about the Muslim agenda to Islamize Nigeria and went to the Ottoman dynasty what they did to and then how Islam took over the Middle East Syria was a Christian nation Lebanon was a Christian nation we all know it in history they were all Christian nation. Even Iraq was a Christian nation. And how the Muslim agenda and then is saying that, saying that, saying that, saying that, and that, and, 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 and Christians are, are here. They're not doing anything. They are not, I was watching to see with you. That man saw the agenda of Islam, but he could not tell us the agenda of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I read it and I was laughing. I say people who don't know God's agenda will see this one now and be afraid. And it's nothing but politicians writing. Now PDP, the right against NPC. Nothing like that. And let me tell you, all of you, that you are using your gifts, your writing ability, speaking ability, your influences, instead of you 
to bring the nation together. You are scattering and polarizing us. God will judge all of you. God will judge you. Let me tell you. This is Satan. There is no nation that broke peacefully. There is no nation that ever broke peacefully. Whether you are fighting for Odua, for what do you call it? Niger Delta or Biafra. One time you are saying, what you are saying is, let us go and shed blood because there will be blood shed. And then, why would you want to do that in this civilized state? In this civilized estate, there are civilized ways of fighting for your right. There are better ways to do it than to set somebody against someone. In my family, there are Muslims and there are Christians and we're living peacefully. Why can't Nigeria also live peacefully? Anyway, I'm not a preacher of that. I am only trying to tell you, I will never use my office to scatter Nigeria. I will do everything to bring us together. Including prayers for this country. Now why I remember it is, there is nothing in the Bible that tells us to watch Islam. It's a diversion. It's Satan diverting us. We are to watch Rome. Watch the Vatican. Don't watch. Don't watch Islam. Just pray. God will only allow Islam go the much it can go. When the time comes, he will put a break to that nonsense. Any leader in Nigeria that tries to put an agenda of Islamizing Nigeria... It's a matter of time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And why are Christians not also with agenda to Christianize Nigeria? Was there not a Christian in the presidency before? Why are they not with agenda? Don't we have Christian states that have money? One state in Nigeria, one state alone in Nigeria, the monthly allocation, I saw it in the newspaper, one state alone, the allocation for one month for one of the states in this uh, in Niger Delta area, Delta State, is, 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 I mean, the whole allocation for the month of six states in Northeast Nigeria is not up to one month or for that one state. Why can't they use that money also and Christianize Nigeria? It's not war. Those people are using sense, then they come, then they come. Malams don't fool east. They don't they marry with our people. Before you know what, they will build mosque in front of the palace of the Eze. Why are you not also pushing that side? Why are you trying to set us to fight one another? Use what they are using. Amen. You too, use money. If not money, use money. We have more money than them. Amen. But that is politics. I am not a politician. I am a watchman. I am watching something to tell you. It's not Islam. We shall watch. Watch Rome. Watch the Vatican. Nations are breaking. Israel's awakening. The sign of the prophet foretold. Gentile days numbered with the horrors and combat. Eternity soon will unfold. Hallelujah! The day of our redemption is near. Men's hearts are failing for fear. Prophets are lying. False prophets are lying. God's the truth they are being denied. That the Jesus, the Christ, is our God. No, oh, yes. no this generation for God's revelation. We walk where the apostles have drawn. Oh, the day. He's never saw. My hearts are failing for fear.
If you be in the faith, we have a message in this hour. Come back to the world. Come back to the apostolic faith. And as you do that, may the Lord keep all of us rapturable in the name of Jesus. Because the culmination of the Antichrist takes place only after the glory has departed. Am I speaking English? When the rapture has taken place, that is when he will manifest fully. For now, the Holy Ghost is the one letting. Is the one that is restraining him because the bride is still here. Hallelujah. And while I have that freedom now to say it, I will say it hard. Under the eagle's anointing, before they shoot, we are gone. Praise the Lord. As you go, the Lord will go with you. His grace will go with you. His mercy will go with you. This revelation will go with you. The fire of revival will go with you. The glory of the soon coming king will be with you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us until we meet again in Jesus' name. Please. Let all the sisters please wait behind. Just they won't take your time for a very brief meeting, very important concerning your dress code for your camp. Oh, God. Praise the Lord. By the time you'll be coming to ask questions, it may be too late. By the time you may be coming to ask for assistance, it may be too late. We just have like very few days before our camp meeting. So please wait. 
there are some important informations, uh, information that we must pass across to you. God bless you. Women of Zion, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you remember, most of you were not at the meeting yesterday. So that's why we, have asked, we are asking you to wait so that you can pass the information across to you. Last Sunday, we came with um, the fabric for the uniform. And it, you can see that the color now is different. Because by the time they went back to the market, they could not get the same color. But we still got the same design. And this one is our uniform for the camp. It's the Women of Zion uniform. It is compulsory that you have this. It's going for 1,500 Naira. And the decision is that you make a skirt and a blouse with it, or wrapper and a blouse, no gown. We are wearing this on the first day of the camp and on the Sunday for our Thanksgiving. Please, no gown. It's skirt and blouse, long skirt, no short skirt. Long skirt and a blouse with this. If you don't have it, don't bother to join us for Thanksgiving on Sunday after the camp.